Welcome back to the Shro Banks Show. I'm Rowdy Ray. I'm here with my man Papa Shro. Shro Banks. I'm here with my man Rated R Red. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And EDJ has decided to grace us with his blissful presence. Oh, it was a long contract negotiation, but I think we figured it out. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> we came to terms, yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. My own locker room is nice, but you guys didn't have to plaster my face on Randy's house. I mean, that was just very kind of you. Um, but God damn it, I'm back. Finally, um, tired of listening to Ray talk. Uh, <laughs> Shuts fire. Well, damn, starting already, man. I'm trying to. I was sitting there. I'm giving him, you know, proper introductions, and this is how I get treated. I thought everybody was together today. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a dog eat dog world out there, right? You right. But how are everybody doing today? It doesn't matter how y'all doing today. <laughs> I was real too about to tell you. Exactly, I know you was. I'm I'm appalled. (laughs) I am appalled. Oh, yeah, nah, bro. Got some brolic energy going today. You know what I'm saying? I think it's official. Am I the only white guy in the podcast now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, What what happened with you, Papa Shro? I am now a dual citizen (laughs) of uh, these lovely states of America, (laughs) as well as uh, Cherokee Nation. Mm -hmm. Running Schroeder is what I'm going to call him now. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Finally got my card. Got that nice little CDIB certification of Indian blood. Yeah. Shit crazy. It is crazy. It's been like five years coming. I went out there to Tahlequah, Oklahoma in 2015. God damn. 2020 up, finally that was, five years ago? that was five years ago, bro. Ah, shit. Hey, bro. <clears throat> yeah, right? E. Took me five whole years to get that shit finally. E. Uh, me and my little brother, actually. Z dubs. Z dubs. Slimy Z. <laughs> <laughs> Slimy Z. Oh, Eric hasn't heard that shit. Oh yet. boy. No, nah, we gonna we gonna we're gonna save him from that. No, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I kinda wanna hear that. Oh Jesus. He not bad. I ain't I ain't even gonna hold you. He not bad. It's just yeah, funny as shit. It is. It's just hilarious. Cause you know, you just see the little kid, you know, who used to just come in this room with his shirt off and slap his belly. You know what I mean? Throw then, shit across the room. You know what I'm saying? And then he just drops bars like what what is this? Bars. Who is this person? Some slimy Z universe, man. <laughs> right. The Mandela effect. Oof. Alright, so what we got on the on the docket for today? Uh, what what we looking at? Uh, Randy, what we what we looking at? I guess we're having a conversation oh, about yeah. uh, groups down south. Down south, like, down south groups. Really, now, we've all brought it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, do you think they produced the best groups, or just they consistently put out dope groups? I was just about to say that it's just a consistency thing. It seems like. I, I think that was just a real short time period where they just put out like really good groups and then that I was feel it. you because it's like when, when I think of like rap groups I mean I automatically think of the South like that's all I really think about I don't know man I think New York had it one yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's, overall I think it, New York had it bro one. cause like you gotta think you had a Tribe Called Quest Wu-Tang Clan the Fugees yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like these no, are, you're absolutely right. This is like insane to think about. Damn, mm-hmm. and then that just shows the depth of my memory. Shit, really, really? That, <laughs> just, that just they started rap with groups. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that's basically what happened. And see, that's what Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah, it kind of started with. Uh, <clears throat> so we was just uh, me and uh, my fiance was sitting and listening to music with uh, our daughter, and uh, Destiny Child was on, and so that's what kind of made me think like. People don't really come out of groups no more, it doesn't seem like, you know? They don't, people don't form a group to, like, start their career and then venture off. Yeah. Like they used to. Nah, like, that almost used to be the mold, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. uh, what's funny is, is that, like, it, that actual archetype has, like, failed the Migos. Because, like, nobody wants to hear them solo. I only want to mm-hmm. hear them in conjunction with each Fair. other. Because... Yeah, that's big facts. Because I've listened to all three solo projects, and I don't like that's none of them. That's their fault, though, because they could be way better. Their their individual albums could be way better. If they try hard. They yeah, 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 yeah. Because, like, they were all sloppy. That's they just, were the, that's all just sloppy. the effort thing. Quavo's yeah. was very sloppy. Takeoff's literally, he just, like, picked beats, rapped over them, and then that was it. Didn't really make, like, the one song he uh, collaborated with Quavo on, slapped. Like, it sounded like it was supposed to be on a Migos album, and it just... You know, got lost in the vault yeah. or whatever. And then Offset, I don't even want to talk about his shit. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Just be real. I was, oh boy, that period of time where he was having legal troubles and Quavo and Takeoff was, you know, just holding it down for the group. Magical times, man. They was dropping just amazing verses. 
But yeah, nah, and then, you know, you, you head out west, you got what, NWA, mm-hmm. uh, Compton's Most One, and it kind of like, kind of takes a, a drop after that, because I can't think of any other, like, you know, just notable groups. Because then after that, it just, like, you know. Yeah, it's just posses after that. It's just posse slash, like, labels. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because then, like, yeah. you know, you got Death Row, Lynch Mob, mm-hmm. uh, Sick With It Records. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm-hmm. yeah, because, like. TD. Yeah, because then, like, after that, we, like, we moved away from technically groups and just went yeah. with labels. Labels, yeah. Because, like, that's how the mold was for, like, the early 2010s, late 20, 2000s. You know, you had MMG. You got. Uh, pro era, young got, money, young money. Uh, aftermath, a- aftermath, yeah, like that. That's a that's, that's a big true. thing, and so you know you got all these different like labels, uh, or if you want to go to you know the early two thousands, you got No Limit, Cash Money, Rockefeller, State Property. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's just all about the labels, not actual groups. And I wonder what made people move away from. Yeah, I was about to say, why do you think that is? You know what? I think mainly because a lot of times they had too much star power to just be within a group. You know what I'm saying? Like one notable guy just happened to have too much to be in yeah, just a group. you split money multiple ways. Yeah. I, I feel that. It's just, I, I think it's something dope kind of seeing that. You see that progression. You see like a few people and then maybe one or two really rise to I think the stardom. It's, I think it's an ego thing. I feel you. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, everybody wants to be the main guy. That, and especially nowadays with, I mean, SoundCloud rap and shit like that. I mean, you can, I could record something right here, right exactly. now. And throw it on the internet. Exactly. And, and if it catch fire. I need to stop saying that. I feel so fucking old when I say on the internet. <laughs> on the internet. But, but it's true. I but mean, yeah. yeah. That's just what it is, man. Um, it's too easy. It's too easy to be a solo artist now, almost. Like, it's almost more difficult to be a group, you know, in a group, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, just like, I mean, just like this podcast. I mean, we got to pick a time, come together once a week to record all together, you know? Yeah. It is tougher than, than most people think. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because really everybody got lives, everybody got shit going and on. And then at that time, you're talking about studio time, you're talking about, you know, let's write something, let's do this, yeah, let's do that. Got your shit wrote. Exactly. I think logistically, it's it, it is harder to be a, a group nowadays. Right. But you know what? And then that kind of attributes to like you know life as we see it nowadays, because mm-hmm. like you know shit's faster. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You exactly. Know what I'm like everything's moving faster. So. And especially in that industry, you know, Boy. this what what have you what you put out last week? Last week, mm-hmm. shit. What about last month? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, what you what you dropped today? And going back to being it, it being tough to be in a group. I mean. There's an art to being in a group because you have to really be complimentary of one another. Right. Yeah. Like, you guys really have to be able to feed off of one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't yeah. just, like, just because you form together, that means you're going to be a group, a good group. Exactly. You know, it has to be chemistry, so. And exactly. Chemistry, and that's going to go how it goes, you know what I mean? Like, even, like, I mean, we, we have chemistry here on the show. But, like, when we first started... It took it Exactly, took it took time. You know, you know what, though? Maybe that's why they did switch to the label format instead of just throwing people in a group mm-hmm. just to avoid that feel-out yeah. process. Yeah. You yeah. know, you can do what you're going to do, and then we'll just make y'all collab and work with each other more, but it doesn't have to be mandated, like, in a group. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you know, we can't drop this unless, you know, you we get a verse from such and such. And thinking about it, it's almost backwards if you think about it. Because you start solo and then, because I mean, think about when we had the, uh, you know, the rumors and, and things uh, with J. Cole and Kendrick or, oh, you know, God. joint albums, um, Currency and Wiz, you know. Yeah, we had one collaborative project for what, better part of four or five years? Because uh, that live and concert didn't come out till like 2016. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, yeah, they had their features here and there on each other's mm-hmm. stuff, but, like, where was the actual EP or a full-length project? And we didn't get that until, what, last year? Yeah. No, 2018. No, 2018, yeah. Took them eight years, because How Fly came out in yeah, 2010. Actually, I might be wrong. I think it actually came out in 2009. So. I think you're, yeah, I think so. So, yeah. Took, That's crazy when you think about that. That's crazy. Almost a full decade to put that out. And, you know, and then labels and things of that nature came into play because, you know, Wiz was always kind of tied up with labels. Yeah. And he finally got out of those. So that's I think that's what actually made it possible. 
because now he's he's garnered enough leverage where the labels have to work with him whether rather than him work with the labels. Right, right. Who do you guys? I mean, we're talking about music. Who do you think you guys would consider the front runner for the next ten years moving forward? I mean, I guess you know we're mainly talking about rap and things of that nature, but just in general, what would what would you guys be looking at? Uh, honestly, man, because like a lot of these guys are just having so many uh, behind the scenes issues with their labels. I honestly don't know. Because, like, you know Little Uzi could be, like, the next star, but, like, he just keeps going through these label disputes, mm-hmm. which, you know, delays his music. Because the last project he came out with was, what, Love is Rage 2, and that was in, like, 2017, bro. Damn, that's crazy. Three years. Three years. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure who individually will run the next decade. Um, as far as regional, I think it'll belong to the South again. More than likely. Just like this past decade did. And, yeah. I mean, I just, I don't see anybody stepping up to the plate and, and knocking them off. No. From a collective standpoint. Now, when you talk about projects that kind of, I guess, uh, just kind of stop everything and get gets everyone's attention, I think that belongs to, I don't even know if that belongs to a particular decade, a uh, particular region. No, I mean it's just like no. you got you, you it's got your, it's yeah sporadic. you got your Coles dropping you got your K dots dropping, Drake. Um, yeah Drake does he really stop everything anymore though? It's kind of weird because like it's it's almost like he hits you in transition. Yeah, you know it, what I'm saying? It's, like because like you'll be sitting there like oh bet that new Drake album comes slap it for like a whole week instead of you know just a day or two yeah. like you know I any think other Views artist. was like the last one that really stopped people yeah because like scorpion that people was really like just anticipated yeah like anticipated. people were very lukewarm when scorpion came out which i was like and he had smash singles on there you know what he i'm saying did. i kind of feel like that's music in general now though like just like what we was talking about about like you can drop anything you know people are dropping it, it something every day yeah, every you week right, you know like so Even, what can really stop you i know something else is coming out next week and then the following week because the, the following only thing week, that kind of made uh, what was that? Uh, K.O.D. by J. Cole, like, make people stop and think was the fact that, like, he sent, like, them half ass subliminal disses towards, like, you know, SoundCloud rappers, i.e., yeah. Smoke Perp, Lil Pump, so on and so forth. But, like, it was, like, it was weird because it was, like, such backhanded, but, like, reaching out at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is cold. I mean, very that's, cold. That's what you get from cold. Very cold. <laughs> very cold. <laughs> I. I just don't know if music has that effect anymore to make people nah. just sit down and say, hey, such and such drop. This is what I'm going to tune into. No. Nah. Like, people, yeah. they just, like, if you can basically capture people's attention for more than two days, you got it. That's big yeah. facts. Mm-hmm. Because, like, uh, to, like, kind of go outside of rap for a second, like, uh, what's her name? Billie Eilish. I was getting ready to say that. Yeah, yeah like, she, she's... She's managed to capture people's attention for, you know, a little bit longer than a week just because there's such an abundance of music. She's just going to be like a pillar in what they're rotating. You know what I mean? Rather than just, you know, another card in the shuffle. Uh, Lizzo, uh, like, you know, this year. I say, like, I don't I don't fuck with her music. I don't. But to say that she does not have a grip on the masses uh, music. No, she does. That's fair. She yeah. absolutely does. I think she's honestly figured out a way to... Roll up people and, and, and trend that way, too. Yeah. Oh, no. like Because that's a key component in staying relevant. Polarization, bro. Yeah. You either love her or you fucking hate her. Yep. Smart. Yeah, I feel that. It's very smart. Uh, I'm trying to think. Has there been any other, like, outside artists that have, like, you know, just had a meteoric rise? Outside of rap? Outside of rap. Cause then, like you know, you got a bunch of. People it's hard to really have them. your pulse on what's going outside, of, going on outside of rap, because rap and R and B are like the number one genres. Yeah. Number one and number two, respectively. Yeah. Because like, and pop music doesn't even sound like quote unquote pop music anymore. No. It's incorporating so much rap and R and B that. Yeah. It kind of gets muddled. You know what I mean? Cause uh, what is it? The fact that uh, Ariana Grande. Like mm-hmm. her, her, her new stuff is like you know bubbling really big. With that, uh, what was that? It was, seven. Was it something rings? Seven rings. Something. It was seven rings. I think 
Seven Rings, Thank You Next, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So on and so forth. Yeah. And like they have very like you know R and B components to them and things of that nature. Like and it's kind of crazy because as popular as that music is, you're just watching people dig for lesser known. You know, like the Snow Allegras, uh, Lena Del Rey, so on and so forth. Like that's what people are digging for when they want to hear quote unquote quality. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not trying to disrespect Ariana Grande because like she has an amazing voice, but like she. She can blow. That's that's one. She has. She's one of those rare people that is once in a lifetime type of talent in the voice, just in general. Um, but yeah, it's it's gotten to a weird point where you have no idea who that person is, but you really want to hear their stuff. Um, and I, th- uh, in a roundabout way, that's kind of great because I mean now we're in a world where anything can happen, and. Not only that, but I mean, you know, you could we could be sitting here and then next week we could be out in L.A. doing some random shit. It's just the way the world works now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for lack of, you know, better or worse, but it's just taken a complete turn from where we were, you know, 10, even 10 years ago. Yeah, because like, uh, what was it? I was listening to, uh, what was it, the Joe Rogan podcast uh, mm-hmm. a while ago, right? And he was talking about how comedians had to, like, you know, go on circuits in New York for the longest, build their name, you know what I'm saying, like, really pay their dues. And then when they would finally get lucky enough to get a late-night show, whether, you know, it'd be Johnny Carson, mm-hmm. so on and so forth, Dave Letterman, and then finally that would be their big break. Mm-hmm. That's what would give them. Or they would uh, get picked by, uh, like, Showtime, HBO, and then that would be the break, right? Mm-hmm. That's outdated now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, pretty yeah. much the people decide who they want to support. Yeah. They don't get, you know, decided for. They get to make that decision. And, that, and that's the way it should be, though. Because, I, mean, I mean, if you look at, you're talking about comedians, if you look at the guys that are at the top, they still go on tour constantly. Yep. Um, they're still out there. I mean, Joe Rogan sells out everywhere. Yep. Um, Bert you know, Kreischer. Ron White sells out everywhere. Ron White does. I mean, it, it's just the guys that have been doing it forever know how to do it. A and it's two are still relevant. You know, after been in comedians for thirty plus years. Yeah. But I think it's tricky when you're when you start talking about rap because it's very fickle. Yeah. And when when the people are putting on rappers, it's usually like this weird narrative that has to occur on the internet for people to start uh having a uh having a meteor uh, medi- meteoric meteoric gotcha. rise right so like okay uh you talking about that basically like vetting process that people have to go through on the internet like mm-hmm. how how is you it? gotta pass you gotta pass like this corny test yeah is he if, a cornball yeah is he a cornball is he gonna for instance, if it's a if it's a black dude or somebody like that, does he like black women? Boy, something like that, or they check I don't your know. Tweet you history, just the whole shebang. Your tweet history, it's everything, bro. Yeah, you do. You kind of have to go under like a microscope before you get passed on it's, for like six months. So with three to six months, like you can't fuck up. Nope, you can't, you can't drop can't a bad up. verse. You can't make songs that sound alike. Yeah, none of that. And then the people just have to really buy into you. Yep. Before they accept the machine for what it is. Mm-hmm. You think that's for better or for worse? I feel like that's how it's always kind of been. Process. Mm. Because yeah. I don't know, man. No, because like, but just the way this. the people, way people can yeah. decide things now. Because there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's you. You can literally see the reaction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and instantly. In that sense, is good. Um. And it's good because before there was a machine that pushed them. Right, right. Like it was it was more of and a, now the machine, machine is more uh, the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I guess in that sense it's good. It's just I don't, I don't know, man. It's still, it still it it has its cons. I feel you. It does, but yeah. like rap has always had like a gatekeeperish aspect about it. Mm-hmm. Cause like you remember for the longest, like you couldn't make it without quote unquote street cred. Yeah. Motherfuckers would even lie about having quote unquote street cred. Uh-huh. Like Vanilla Ice is one of my favorite cases. Lied about where he's from, what he did, and all that, and got exposed and turned his back on the industry that you know made him who he was mm-hmm. because he lied. Uh, or you always hear about like we watched. This is when I watched the real like that facade fall. It was the whole Rick Ross thing. 
when Rick Ross was exposed for being a corrections officer at one point in time, right? And yet his career didn't even take a hit. People acted like they wasn't fucking with Ross. The numbers were still the same, if not going up. The, uh, the quality of music went up. His career thrived after he was exposed. But he also, I feel like he's one that like didn't pay no attention to that shit. Oh no, he didn't give it any he energy. Didn't. He just <laughs> he literally he just had went no right back choice. To, but like, I think that that's also part of it when somebody is. It's almost like in uh, MMA when you see somebody like with Connor, really, like when he took the loss and was like, "Fuck, I lost. Uh, I'm gonna get better and I'm gonna come back." People, people like that. I guess he didn't really acknowledge it, but in that sense, it's almost the same thing, I think. I just playing it off like it didn't even fucking happen, so it didn't happen. Low-key, I wish Jones had did that. What? Like, all the bullshit, you know, from the wrecking the Bentley with the supposedly 200. He kind of did on the JRE. He kind of did. If you if you listen to that episode. I mean, I'm talking right about, like, it, but outside, of like, outside of that. Like, you know, publicly, like, during, you know, post-fight uh, scrums oh, and all okay. that. Like, because, like, he's sitting there crying on the stage and all that shit. And, like, you know, like, getting really emotional, feeding into it, giving it a lot of energy. Right. kind of wish he had just been like, yeah, man, like, you know, that's not something I'm really trying to talk about with y'all. I'm just trying to move forward with this hey, if he would have kept up the bad, like, the bad boy facade, like, if he would have just damn, fuck man. him. Everybody got a fucking podcast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mad random. But this is a big fact. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm not mad, I guess. It's just like, fuck, man. Nah, he right, bro. I got a competitor's mindset. So I I'm just feel thinking, you. Damn, no. that's another Hey, because I've been thinking that against. there there was something, uh, it was on the radio, they was talking about somebody's podcast, but uh, and I was just thinking, like, these motherfuckers, man, you already famous. Fuck your podcast. <laughs> Word. Don't. Don't let let this. let us do this shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, we ain't made a name yet, all right? You already got your name, and now you podcast, so fuck that. Cause like there's like ten different podcasts in KC I fuck with. For real? Ten. Word. And mm. like and that's like that's on a light side. Like those right. are just people I've like managed to just hear of. I really don't I mean, I, I I don't pay attention that much just to be real honest, but at the same time, like the only one I know out of Kansas City is yada yada. Really? I think that's just because they came. Cause what mm. is I forgot. It's like uh like Good Belly K C or some shit like that. I can't remember. Hey, that dude that got the one in his car. You seen that one? Where he has the, like, he has artists in his car and he'll interview them. Real shit? In the car while oh, he's driving. Yeah. Kind of like yeah. that car test with uh, yeah. Elliot Wilson. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, I it's seen, dope as fuck. I ain't seen that one. Uh, What, there's Two Cooped. There's Chill You. The, like, the list just goes It's a lot on, of them, bro. There's yeah, so it's a lot many. Of them. There's so many. Yeah. Like, thankfully, though, they keep theirs relatively short. 30, 45 minutes. We get a little long with it, but I like it. Sorry. Right. Yeah, same. Different strokes, different folks, so on and so forth. I feel shout like. Shout out to all the other podcasts. Yeah. We're coming for y'all, but shout out to y'all, man. Yeah. It's all love. You know, it's competitive. Word. That's all. That was, some, exactly. that was some real maturity, Randy. Speaking of maturity. <laughs> <laughs> Say way. <laughs> How do you guys feel about World War Three? That, I don't, it's not a war by. By the way, just in case you conflict, didn't know that, uh, conflict, um, number, conflict number five thousand. Yeah. Um, well, what is your take on it? Because there are memes out there that are golden. Um, but what what is your guys take on that? How do you feel about that? Honestly, this is something that's been in the back of my head since I turned eighteen and registered to vote. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you have to sign up for that, like, enlist for, you know, a possible draft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as soon as you, you, you're you eligible to vote and all that. And so, like, and now that my brother, he has, what, four kids. He's 31. I'm the one that's going to get shipped off if, you know, if it comes down to it. And I've talked to, like, you know, some other of my peers, like, you know, other men who are my age and whatnot. And what's crazy is the resounding result I've, I've heard so far is like, man, I'll go to jail. I'm not finna fight in the war. Y'all have, y'all can have that. Ray is not going to jail. Hey, my thing on that is you ain't Cassius Clay. Bro, that's what they <laughs> like. I'm a conscientious objective. Yeah, no, that's uh-huh, just somebody not working. Somebody got to conscientious object your ass, bro. Uh-huh. Like, you going to jail. <laughs> You're going to jail. I'm, I'm not jail going to jail now. I'm not going to jail, bro. Because, like, and this is the whole thing. You're... 
like you're going to a federal prison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I will say at least it's almost it's so almost the same thing as going to jail, I would say. Like being forced into the military. Yes. But you are you going to gain skill and get paid. Exactly. So it 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 is and it isn't. And then you, you know get, what I'm saying? And like, then you get full respect with it. You know what I'm saying? That's true. You know, people, oh, we love our troops. <laughs> We don't don't, don't say don't. nothing when I'm sitting here on the side of the road. Veteran needs some help. Get a job, you bum. <laughs> I served this country. I lost a toe. <laughs> Fuck off, buddy. Do you guys do you guys feel like it could turn into the Vietnam situation to where you know it, it's become or it became rather probably the most disliked conflict in American history? No. Yeah, I don't think so. Either. I don't think nope. it's of that magnitude just yet. Uh, if anything, I feel like this is like the beginning of a new Cold War. I could see that. I feel like we were already there. We yeah, are, but yeah. just a different opponent. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like this time, our our new ob- uh, objective is basically China. Is how mm-hmm. I see it. That's how I see it. Because we, we keep having these trade wars with them, Word. tariffs, so on and so forth. And we've, we've literally been in... BS conflicts with them because, like, you remember the whole South China Sea situation back in like 2016. Yeah. Uh, like, there's just been leadings up to this, and so I think Iran is a starting point, and no telling where it'll, it'll go from there. I doubt it'll be fought on either soil, you know, China or ours. Be very surprised if it leads to that. Very surprised, but it'll more than likely be fought in like Indochina, Middle East, possibly Europe, though. Just because with Brexit happening, you kind of see the EU getting weaker yearly. Uh, you know, that's where I see the, the battlegrounds being possibly. It could, but I mean, at the same time, I, I think what America did or the you know, United States military did, we'll put it that way, um, they killed one of the most, you know, thought after bad guys in the world so i think that adds some weight to tip its scale more towards not cold war and more of an actual war because i mean nobody really dies in the cold war so we're talking about Eh. no Eh. that's what vietnam was it was a literal indirect battle of the cold war korea vietnam but uh, but america didn't go in and kill their military leader we try. We, we literally try. We're trying and doing is two different uh, things. What, what's what's his name? Ho Chi Minh. We literally we tried to kill him multiple times, which led actually to the rise of communist China as right. we know it. I feel like either way, it's almost splitting hairs for real. It yeah, is. You know what I mean? Like, well, like, uh, like we're getting into semantics, of right? Um, nuances. Cliches. Yeah, I don't know what to think about the whole situation. I feel like, and especially like the way the world is now and how different it is i don't and i have no outlook on this and then this is the whole thing even though a war has never been fought uh like you know a foreign invader on our soil since what 1776 yeah uh yeah nobody's invaded us since besides technically japan but that was just a a direct attack on well well we fought the spanish I, that, and see, that's yeah. that's a little bit older. I'm just thinking of right. the what was that the Spanish American War, but that was more so yeah. in Texas before it was annexed. So does that count as American soil? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 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 Splitting Splitting hair. Hair. Uh, yeah. But I can't remember a time like literally none of us have grew up in a time without America being involved in a foreign conflict. None of us, from Desert Storm to the whole uh, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq uh, conflict, and Serbia. Like, you know, we've been involved in literally so many different foreign affairs. We don't know what it's like to be in a full peacetime America. So I kind of feel like this is just more of the same. It just, it, the pressure might get turned up. Right, and I maybe that's exactly why I feel the way I do. It's almost like... You know, we've been lulled to sleep our whole life on shit like this. And it's like, okay. It's normal for us to be like, it's like just to be deployed in the actual conflict. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, because, you know, 
if it was peacetime, like, yeah, we probably have guys at, like, different embassies or forts and whatnot, that's that's normal. You know what I'm saying? Doing reconnaissance, building bonds with other countries, so on and so forth. But now, like, we don't know a time where that's happened. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, people are always being dropped into conflicted areas. Because, uh... But I think that's where the jokes come from, is that nothing never really popped off. You know, it's just right. something bubbling and you know what though he he's right the and just to kind of like you know take a little bit of the seriousness off my favorite thing in this whole situation was literally right after the news that came that we dropped uh was so sully iman i can't think uh, the, i don't know the names but yeah the uh political uh guy we killed in iran mm-hmm. literally right after that trump tweeted a picture of the american flag yeah. Goat level shit. Say what you will. This has been the funniest presidency I've ever seen. Because, like, with Bush, it was just, like, idiocy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was just saying dumb shit. Mm-hmm. Like, Trump is out here gangbanging for America, bro. Literally, we dropped the op and he threw up the set. <laughs> Who, does- <laughs> <laughs> Who does this? <laughs> Who does this? To be honest with you, though, I mean, this was a lot of stuff that in coming out now that Obama kind of wanted to do, but he just never did. So this has been on America's radar for quite some time. Um, so in a way, Trump pulled the trigger. You know, <laughs> you guys are taking too damn. I'm going to do this myself. Um, to translate but, that, Eric said, Trump bout about it. <laughs> for real. Uh, but it, but in all serious no, this, this has been what America, I don't know if it's been what they wanted to do, but they... They have not. Want, they've been wanting to take this guy out for a while. Um, well, in our whole lives, we've heard about Iran, right? Right. I mean, and even even further back with the the hostage situation, you know, this is kind of yeah, cause a long standing thing with Iran. It's just I can't lie though. Sometimes it gets really sad to think about because you just see nothing but like just destruction and pestilence. You know, after we touch a, a, a Middle Eastern nation. Because, like, all right, like, uh, when we aided the foreign rebels uh, in Libya and they took out Gaddafi, right? Mm-hmm. That country is in fucking shambles. Yeah. Uh, what was it? They estimated between three and like 10,000 kids, children, you know, non, non hostiles were killed in Syria due to Obama's uh, drone bombings. You know what I'm saying? Like we just keep touching these countries and they're just getting fucked up more and more. How much of an impact do you think that has on Obama's legacy? Because I, I think a lot of, for some reason, a lot of people overlook those in a general oh. overlook of his oh, tenure. Yeah. No, see, this is the whole thing. Because like I, I used to quote unquote sip the Kool Aid, but do not think I'm one of those like black Republicans. So, like, don't think I'm about to put on a MAGA hat and all that shit and be like, black Republicans for Trump. I'm, I'm not one of them. But I can still be objective about it and realize what Obama was. Obama was a, he was a figure. He was a figurehead. Uh, he was every president. Exactly. He was every yeah. other president. He had his faults, a lot of fucking faults. And it's, it's kind of funny that we tend to magnify those opposed to other ones. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, like, people get a little touchy when you say Ronald Reagan was the goddamn devil. Yeah. This Set man... that around my family and they, <laughs> they, they looked at me real weird. I'm saying, like, this man flooded urban areas with crack. Crack. Uh, yeah, I said that and I got, well, you can say that, but... <laughs> <There is proof. laughs> but, but what? <laughs> this man literally had dealings, or excuse me, his administration, I won't say him, his administration had dealings with Manuel Noriega, the uh, dictator of Panama, and uh, Contras, the, uh, the, the rebel forces down there in Panama, and then he also uh, had dealings with the rebel forces in Colombia, which who was, excuse me, which who was producing the cocaine that was coming to America. This was all under his administration. This is documented, literally. And there's no, uh, that's not a coincidence that crack but, started booming at that time. That's a big fact. But you know what I also got to thank him for? Without him, rap would be mad shitty. I wouldn't have a Jay-Z. So Ronald Reagan is the best president of all time. <laughs> 
I mean, he did a lot more. Uh, he did like the worst part is it was polar opposites. He destroyed and built a community at the same time. That's big facts. I can't I always, say the same I for Bush. Always say Ronald Reagan is the uh, founder of gangster rap. Yeah, yeah. Without him, I wouldn't have my Pusha T coke raps, bro, and that'd be a sad life. And he he was really technically doing some gangster shit. So was Kennedy. <laughs> the biggest crack mover ever. <laughs> biggest crack mover ever. This man was talking wet to Russia. He came, he came in. <laughs> this is how you do it. <laughs> Deb, go back and watch. I mean, that's boring, but go back and watch some of Reagan's like comments. <sighs> he didn't give a fuck. And this, he really didn't. What was it? It was him that uh was talking about aliens, bro. Yeah. He was one of the few presidents that was speaking about aliens. Because he got abducted or some shit like that, didn't he? Well, he, he says... Well, right. Yeah. But oh, it, shit. He said he got abducted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't know about that. He was uh-huh. like, we need to be united against a front outside of us. What? What do you mean? Apparently, someone didn't tell him about Kennedy started speaking up about <laughs> private shit and look what happened to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about that on... I think it was with Tony Hinchcliffe on the Rogan Experience. Mm-hmm. And... It, how deep Kennedy went into secret organizations and the Skull and Bones. And, uh, well, I don't know if Skull and Bones was, well, I think it was. Um, and all of those groups that basically we have no idea about. And they brought up Alex Jones, even though Alex Jones is an interesting guy. But he did have, he does have one of the most intriguing videos captured of all time in that cult. The where they, yeah. You know. Yeah. It's just, that shit goes on. Mm hmm. And we have no idea. It's, it's the deep state. It's just, it's very, very smoke. strange. It's a fact. <laughs> it's just not like, have you ever actually sat down and watched those videos? Any of those? These people are hanging on to reality by a thin fucking <laughs> thread, bro. Like this, this consumes. But so them. are the people that are doing this shit. Right. That's actually a fact. It's kind of weird. They exact like they exist on the same spectrum. I, I was literally about sides. to say the exact same thing. They it's, really do. They are all right here. It's just weird though. Like you know, they they commit their entire lives to exposing this stuff for like minimal gain. Yeah. Like no real gain. That's really true though. You know what I'm saying? Cause because like, think about how, how many people just don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Because, like, bro, like, at a certain point, like, man, shut that shit up, bro. Turn right. the music up. Right. Turn it up. <laughs> and I get it because I don't want to think about that shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, let's, let's have a good time. Fuck that. <laughs> I think it's you just got to find a balance. Like, keep that shit in mind and know what is happening around you. Like, awareness is the major key. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing when a PSYOP is happening. Because, like, you know what's really crazy? I read I read that the CIA actually funded the counterculture movement in the early, uh, late 1950s, early 60s. And had people experimenting with drugs to alter consciousness, right? Mm-hmm. And basically make them more compliant. Which... You got to remember, these are the boomers, right? Yep. And then those are the people that was like, go to school, get in debt, get a corporate job, stay there till you're, you know, 70 years old, retire. And then, like, everybody tried to follow that mode after that, which we've watched fail, you know, over the past 10, 15 years. Yeah. It's outdated, but that's what they, they managed to lay that brickwork where it stood for that long. Damn. That's Chess, not motherfucking checkers. Yeah, I feel you. Sure. Yeah. I ain't never really thought of it like that. Yeah, just think about it. It's an Science. interesting theory. I, Not a theory. These uh, are all facts. Uh, the CIA did this. Uh, Why are you in? Look into it. Like, I'm not saying it's just to fucking say it. This isn't just some crackpot shit I think yeah. up. Follow the fucking bread trail. Like, it's there. Yeah. It's there. I mean, that's right around the same time. Well, I mean, the LSD shit. MK Ultra, all that shit. And this you know? is declassified information right. that is available. This is fact. This is what happened. <laughs> right. I don't know what the ultimate know, goal is. I guess basically to keep people in compliance. That's Mind the control. Yeah. yeah. Make people do what you want them to do. But, you know, like, what's the goal behind that? Because, like, we know that goal, but what's the goal behind that? Why are they doing that? Like, why do they want to keep people compliant? That one is a good question. Control. 
I mean, yeah, control the, the for what? Control. Just just for the sake of control? Yeah, to con- control to keep power. What is... Yeah. The, and see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not even trying to be like that guy, but like... I mean, we've been dealing with semantics all show. So what is the quote-unquote key power? It could be anything. If you're going to be that guy, I'm going to be that guy. Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, it's just what's important. Money. In our world, it would be money. In their world, I don't know what it would be. Because basically, I feel what you're saying because, like, money equals power. Yeah. That's how I always looked at it. Like, money equals power. It's very true. They're interchangeable. Like, and if, if it was a different currency, like, if we dealt with gold, gold is power. Or if we, you know, somehow was managed to, like, make oil coins, and that's how, that was our currency. Oil is power, you know what I'm saying? Even though that oil is money. money. You good? Uh, <laughs> I thought I heard B on the couch. <laughs> and uh, I was like, nah, cut the shit off. I thought he seen a black man. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Ravion was digging into the oil uh, conspiracy a little too deep there. Nah, man. Oh, God. We went what would the power be? Man. The power? Well, since we're there, like, what, what, what do you think the power would be? I would say the power would be the control over the masses to, well, one, I mean, same thing like y'all was talking about, money. Yeah. You want to control the money. Yep. You want to control anything that has anything to do with the money, like you were talking about with oil. And then at the end of the day, I mean, land. I mean, if you control, you control a vast majority of land, I mean, I think that's a, a big part of it, too. Because, I mean, if you are in control i mean whoever is really in control of america whether it really is the government or some other source i mean that's a pretty expansive territory locked up in a lot of fucking people yeah but at the end of the day like all right now i'm putting on my tinfoil hat fuck you (laughs) i mean we've we've been there for like the past 15 the uh (laughs) What is it? Uh, Georgia Stonehenge. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Nope. Tinfoil hat is on. <laughs> where uh, it, it reads, I think, isn't it I was just getting 000? ready to bring that up. Keep the world under 500,000 people. That's how you keep control. 500 and, million. Is it 500 million? million? Mm-hmm. Okay. 500 million people. That's how you keep control. You keep your resources fresh. You're never going to run out of anything. I, you I know mean, what's the, and you know it's the fucked up part? Because a cynic like myself... Well, I, I have cynic moments. I ain't gonna call myself cynic. But, bro, I'll be thinking about that. Like, there's way too many people in this world. I mean, and that's a big fact, though. I mean, and if we can sit here and we all know there's too many people in the world. And then, you know, think about what what are they doing, you know? If we can just come up with that collectively, there's too many fucking people here. Hey, bro. And it's crazy because, like, when you think about it, like I was saying, it's chess, not checkers. It's so fucking wild because a lot of people, they kind of, I won't say hide the information, but like they don't make it widely available to what people need nutritionally. So people go off of a standard American diet, fuck up their bodies. People go on a vegan diet, fuck up their bodies. People go on a fruitarian diet, fuck up their bodies. Nobody's doing blood work and checking what nutritionally what they need and then basing their diet off of that. You know what I'm saying? Because it varies by age race blood type you know what i'm saying body specifics like the whole shebang all of that is encapsulated and needs to be thought about and applied to a diet but nobody takes the time out to do that i think that's just calling people out for not being that serious about dieting and like because that's literally the it's not it's deeper than that it's not even dieting he's been on that journey for years he's just came to that conclusion that's true Dre was strictly like veggies and this and that and he just came to that conclusion, like, within the probably the past few months. Literally. Because, like, I started to notice that my body was breaking down after I thought I had healed it, you know, from, like, a vegan diet. Because, like, you know, I was on the standard American, fucking myself up. So then I started eliminating, like, you know, uh, processed foods and uh, unorganic, like, oils and shit. Like, you know, safflower oil and, you know, peanut oil and so on and so forth. Shit that's fucking me up. So then... I went vegan for a while, and I was just like, I still just don't feel great. Like, my body still fucking hurts, so on and so forth. So then I started looking into, uh, like, uh, blood type uh, diets. So, basic, like, based off your blood type, like, whether you have type O, A, B, whatever, uh, that's how you need to base your diet. And so, like, since I'm type O, a paleolithic diet would be optimal for me. So, like, you know, uh, lean meats, uh, light veggies, nuts, uh, and low-carb fruits. 
that would be optimal for a person with my blood type. I can't speak on anybody else. And then you also have to get the blood work done, which I'm waiting uh, waiting to do. Nigga got AIDS. <laughs> Real mature, Randy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. That is crazy, though. And, and everything that goes into just dieting in general and finding, like, an optimum diet is Yeah, and that's the key. Insane. Like, that's the root for pretty much all disease or improper body responses. What was your diet when you had to do the fighting? What What were you dieting on? Mainly when I cut weight, I was on a keto diet, essentially. Um, Mine was lean. Yeah, fat and protein, and that's about it. As little carbs as I could get. And, I mean, it worked, but it also was stagnant at the same time because... Later on, what I found out with the help of Ray is that it's basically just doing the same thing I'm already doing and helping me get water out of my body. So it worked, but at the same time, like it wasn't the most optimum for real. Right. Because yeah. at the end of the weight cut, it was, you know, felt like I was on death's doorstep. And even for the fight, I was not 100% for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because you were thin. Yeah, and by the second, what, the third round? Yeah, definitely in the third round, because I can remember when I threw a wheel kick and slipped and fell, and I uh, managed to reverse them and get back uh, in top position. I literally remember thinking, I'm fucking done. This fight is over. I will hold you here for whatever amount of time is left. There's nothing left for me to give. And then after that, all adrenaline, and I was like, fuck yeah, I'm a party. We're going to have a great fucking night. And I was in bed by midnight. Dead ass. And man. woke up like. This man like, popped a fucking bottle and went to sleep. Bro. <laughs> who does that? Yeah. Facts. And then yeah. I, I woke up Sunday morning feeling like straight death. Like my Doo-doo. whole body hurt. I couldn't hardly move. And I, I think it goes back to the diet and all that shit. Everything that I did to cut Ooh. the weight. Because yeah, I was going to say, because you didn't take much punishment. You know what's crazy? One, I weighed in at 171 uh, Friday night. Saturday, I weighed in at 186 before I left for the fight. You know what's wild, too? I think this is what fucked you up, too. Because when you remember when you told me uh, your fiance had made you, uh, what was that, like shrimp Alfredo? Yeah. I think those heavy carbs caused a crash. Oh, probably. Because then, so, yeah, so right after weigh-in, I literally smashed a whole bottle of Pedialyte. Like, the whole <laughs> the fucking whole thing. Man. Whole fucking thing. <laughs> I just, this man didn't talk to me for 30 seconds. I was like, God damn, bro. Bro, because when, I don't know if I've ever felt a feeling like looking at that scale, on weight, I felt like I won the fight already. I was just like... <laughs> Fuck yes. I made it. <laughs> Fuck this. Can't nobody tell me nothing. And then uh, then I, I smashed that bottle of Pedialyte, got home, and ate probably two bites of pasta. Like, I didn't even come close to half a bowl of that shit because I was so... Because even then, how little I was eating every day, you know, like, I couldn't handle eating a lot. Or, no. you know, after yeah, that... Whole, stomach was, yeah. Stomach yeah. After that bottle of Pedia, like, I was full. Like, it was game over. I was yeah. done. And then the next day, I don't even know if I... Yeah. I don't know I what I, I ate I the next day. I don't think you ate. Like, day of the fight? I don't remember you eating. Honestly, day of the fight, I don't really remember anything other than... I remember getting there for the doctor's... Because uh, the doctors have to check you out day of the fight. And I remember sitting there just, like, praying that my opponent didn't show up. Because I was just so fucking terrified. I felt every emotion you can feel in that span from weighing into the fight of, you know, I couldn't wait. I was happy. I was excited. I was fucking nervous. I was, man, everything. It, it was really weird experience. Uh, experience and all that. Because, like... Man, I totally understand, like, when Darren Till was like, he wanted to fake an injury. I wanted to fake an injury. I feel that. Like, 110%. It's just, it's what you go through in that process. Because, especially the thought of, you start seeing people getting there. And it's like, all right, I could get knocked the fuck out in front of all these people. Yeah. I have no idea what's going to happen. And I was fighting a dude that had only been training for, like, 
couple months. Yeah, three to six months, and I had six years of training under my belt. That was another thing that terrified me. What if this dude comes out and knocks me out, and he's walking in off the street, basically? Right. What was this time for that I spent building? Exactly. You know, that's a terrifying thought. And that almost goes back to, like, the John Jones thing of when he was, you know, I would just go get blackout drunk so I had an excuse. Like, there's no excuses there but you. Yep. You can only blame that shit on um, you. you. And that is, man, maybe I'm the most terrifying but for real, that is the most terrifying thing ever, you know? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a child, man. Hey, man, part two. <laughs> That's the second time you got sing, hey, singing on the pod. This was this was consensual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> what, man? We like almost an hour in. 51. 51? 51 minutes? No shit. Yeah, I thought we was like an hour oh, fifteen. I, I damn, hold on, I might have missed the cutoff time to like start saying random bullshit. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Hey, uh, no, you good? About fifty minutes is good. Yeah, oh, okay, cool. that's yeah. that's the only thing about me sitting here. I can see the time, so I don't necessarily feel like, you know, I I can see it, so I know exactly. Oh, so what you we know been. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I did feel like uh, we had been on for a while, like around the thirty minute mark, and I was kind of surprised. Yeah, so. I mean, we we really managed to like this is a really dense one. Yeah, this it really is. A is. Dense one. I know, and I was just thinking, kind of going off of like the last episode, just talking about the show and stuff, and um, you know, I've noticed especially from editing that episode, it's almost like. Yeah, I ain't even got to edit too much anymore. No. You know, I, I mean, noticed that too. No. It just flows. It, when, it I, when I was editing before, yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. We've, because what was it, post 10 when we kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. loosened up and was like, you know, take off the radio personality and be who the fuck you are. Yeah. yeah it, Getting in our bag. Speaking of that, episode 26 has eclipsed episode 10 as number two. What? All mm-hmm. time. That surprised me. The uh, Lamar Jackson debate. Really? Number two. Yeah, it eclipsed the Nipsey Hussle episode. Put your arms down. <laughs> oh, I'm putting them up. You talking about the rainy. Yo, defending. Yo, no, no, no. You guys need to talk about that shit. Lamar Jackson. M. I need to hear it. P. I need to hear it. P. Hey, me and I Ray have, what, I need to hear what EDJ. Me and Ray have this debate about every day at work. Literally, bro. bro. We had a 30-minute conversation I about swear. this shit. Me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, okay, so did you see what I put on our Twitter last night where uh, Bill Polian and two other uh, Sirius XM uh, did not vote Lamar Jackson for All-Pro? Good. What? Come on. Eric smoking dick. Come on. Come on, man. Look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. Yes, look at the numbers. <laughs> I'm. Excuse me, I'm talking right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been waiting for this. Go ahead. Throwing over the middle of the field, Lamar Jackson is great. Okay. When he throws sideline to sideline, he is garbage. <laughs> garbage. <laughs> garbage. As, Look. As I put my home stick in my mouth. <laughs> Shut that shit up. No, I I want you to be factual for a second and listen. So. All right, good time, Ray. Good time. When he throws sideline to sideline, he's awful. And if you're gonna tell me he's good, then you have. Side, okay, sideline to sideline. You mean like so down the sideline, down the sideline. Okay, he's off, okay, terrible. Okay. In the middle of the field, where his offense is set up for him to be, he is good because he's got all his tight ends. He's got Brown in the middle. It, it, that's what their offense is meant to do: run the ball, control the clock, and throw it when he has to. Mm-hmm. Is that not what their offense is? Very true. Yes. Okay. So when you have an offense like that, that's gonna. Abide uh, to him, and that's gonna make him what he is right now. But yes. once Greg Williams leaves to become a head coach Greg somewhere, Williams. who fucking cares? <laughs> when <laughs> when he becomes a head coach somewhere, which he probably will, um, Lamar Jackson's gonna be back to what he was. Shut that shit up, bro. Did you see him in the playoffs last year? That was last year. So what? He was doing good in regular season two last year. He wasn't this. He wasn't this. He, he wasn't. wasn't he wasn't this, but he wasn't bad. He wasn't this though. This is great. That he, was okay. Okay, so okay, I'm gonna kind of summarize what me and Ray talked about because 
let's just let's let's go across the spectrum. Eric's on that side. Mediated I'm in are. the middle, Mediated. and you guys are definitely on the other side of the spectrum. Hey, so, brother, I didn't even say what side I was on. Okay. Ray is on the other side of the spectrum. God damn Randy, right. I'm not sure where he's at. I'm on he's the other side so of the spectrum. I just, I didn't want okay. to judge. Okay. Don't yeah. speak for me. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I apologize. I apologize, <laughs> Randy. So, um, basically what we was kind of saying is, this is my take on Lamar, is I, I do kind of agree some points EDJ makes because he's got an offense that's built around him. It's built for him. So, um, to interrupt you just briefly, mm-hmm. yep. are we penalizing him for the coach doing what he was supposed to do by no. building an offensive no. ground? No, I'm not penalizing him. I, not. I don't want to take anything away from what Lamar Jackson is doing because Lamar Jackson is the MVP. He may very well be the best quarterback in the league right now as what he's doing. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily as a quarterback, but what he is doing and for his team. So I don't want to take anything away from him, but at the same time, he is an elite rusher, and he is a good quarterback. You know what I mean? He is, he's an elite-level running back, with and he makes that from being the quarterback. I mean, if you threw Tyreek Hill in a quarterback, he could do, in this offense, he could probably do the same thing Lamar Jackson's doing. Ah, uh, that's... that's- it's a reach, yes. That's a t- right, right. But I'm just saying, like, with, with the speed and stuff, because... Like any other quarterback, Lamar Jackson is on, like I told Ray, Lamar Jackson's on a different fucking planet. No other quarterback can do what he can do. And just like Mike Vick, I see this situation exactly how Mike Vick was early in his career. Because Lamar isn't fine-tuned, he's not... So basically, there's two different skills, and there's one he needs to really get. And one is rushing. He, He has... He, he's amazing at that. He, he can do whatever he wants with his legs. But what he really needs to work on is becoming a quarterback that extends the play. And I'm, I'm not going to compare. I'm going to compare him to Ben Roethlisberger right now instead of Patrick Mahomes because Thank we you. always compare him to Pat. Thank you. But there's a reason for that because they are, you know, right around the same. You know, they came in the league about Age, the same, same time. time. Yeah. Okay, so let's compare him to Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger does everything to extend the play to throw the football, right? Lamar Jackson extends the play to run. And when you're looking at a quarterback, you want somebody that can move around, find his blockers, you know, his linemen to where he can still get a throw off. And he's not good at that yet. Looking at his games lately, though, I don't I don't totally agree with that. Because lately, I think he's been extending, especially when when he's in the red zone, he's extending the play to get that ball in the end zone. Right, but... That and is, I think, I that's mean, kind of I a think handicap. That's what it's all because, about. Right. That's kind of a handicap with the end zone just because then he, he can't really run <clears throat> too much. There's too much traffic around there. You know what I'm saying? That's, but I mean that's fair. But I'm like I said, I'm not trying to take anything away from Lamar Jackson, but he just needs to develop that skill and become a better quarterback because I do agree that he's still not you know, he's not a top tier quarterback in the in the sense of a quarterback, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so I get what you're saying. Like, now I understand what you're saying. Instead of just saying quarterback, passer. Right, right exactly. There we go. Because, like, there was just the terminology is where I was starting to, that's where I would differ and mm-hmm. have dissent with. I was just like, uh, like, he's a, but he's a quarterback. Like, you know, he's basically redefining it his way. Mm-hmm. But well, as a give it forward a wreck. Thank you. Uh, Look, real quick, before before you go on, the only other thing I want to say is the back to the comparison of Michael Vick, because I don't think that this this won't work in the playoffs. It probably, I mean, it probably won't. I don't think it will either. Because, and just for the simple fact that at the end of the day, it's a one trick pony. You know, I don't think it's if because he's of him. Forced, though, I think it's because people that you're gonna face supreme talent. Exactly, and. You know, like like EDJ was saying, in the regular the regular season is totally different from the playoffs. We're we're in a totally different environment now, and you know things are going to change. And it's the same thing, just like last year. If he's forced to stay in the pocket at all, that's not beneficial for the Ravens or Lamar Jackson. And before you start, I want to make this one point here. The way it looks, and I know we have a lot of bad luck with this, so I'm not going to push it too hard. But the way it looks, he's on a collision course to the team he hasn't beaten. The only team he hasn't beaten. The Chiefs? As of right now. Oh, yeah. The way it looks. So, I mean, and you're looking at a defense that is completely different from when he played him the first time. 
And Spagnuolo has only gotten that team to a better place. It really sucks that we I lost. Think what does that have to do with his regular season? His great regular season, bro. It doesn't I have much to do with his great regular season. But I we're now we're now we're in postseason. I know, I know. But I was asking you about his MVP season. Like, what did you think about his MVP season? You said it was good. That I think what he did ball, was great. Do you think he deserves to be MVP and All Pro quarterback first team? MVP, no. I think Russell Wilson deserves the MVP. But he beat Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's done more than I will say to EDJ's point, that has nothing to do with an MVP race. I don't think, personally. What? The fact that he beat the Seahawks. No? Like, no. that's a quality. To, like, that's a quality. It's a quality I agree, win. But that doesn't. Just because Russell Wilson's on the Seahawks, that doesn't put Lamar above him in MVP talk, I feel. that That's just me, personally. And that's subjective. I, I just go off of, like, quality of wins, quality of play, which... And I agree with you on that. I'm just saying, like, him beating Russell Wilson's team does not mean, to me, oh, he's MVP over Russ because he beat Russ. I kind of, like, that's just how I use as, like, a tiebreaker. You know fair. what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, that's fair. Because, yeah. like, you know, okay, uh, you could take, what, Russell Wilson had, like, 4,000, like, 4,100 yards this year, mm-hmm. right? And, like, 30-plus touchdowns. You know, comparable, uh, at, like, passing stats, he has not better, right? He has not beat. And then rushing, obviously, Lamar Jackson has not beat. So then what do I use as a tiebreaker between the two top contenders for MVP? Quality of wins and then... Who the better quarterback is? Oh, my God. I don't... I'm just talking I, actually, shit. Actually, <laughs> actually, what I did, though, and this was a few with a few games to go in the season, I actually combined their passing and rushing uh, yards and see, I combined, so I combined Lamar Jackson's passing and rushing yards and the touchdowns he was responsible for, all of that. And they were versus actually. Versus Russ. Versus Russ's. His, his, and, his rushing mm-hmm. and passing. Yeah. And it was actually equal. I think Lamar Jackson actually had the edge with like two games to go. And also sitting out, what, five, five, four quarters? I didn't even, I don't know. Cause like uh, cause me uh, I was trying to run that split to uh Levi mm-hmm. yesterday, and we seen it like what was it like it four to five games were just blowouts, you know, mm-hmm. thirty plus point differential, and they just sat them for the fourth, you know, mm-hmm. there's no point in keeping them in there, right? Uh, with risk of injury, and so like that definitely capped a lot of his passing stats because that's where a lot of quarterbacks end up passing is late in the fourth, you know, uh, mm-hmm. they'll get at least fifteen attempts. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you take that kind of split and then you look at his touchdown ratio, so on and so forth, it was fucking amazing. So, to counter what EDJ said about in terms of his MVP season or lack thereof, and if he should be voted an All-Pro, what do you have to say as your rebuttal? As my rebuttal? I mean, even though, okay, he's going off an eye test, those are very subjective. You can't argue with numbers. You get what I'm saying? Numbers are undisputable, or in, like is it indisputed or undisputed? Undisputed? What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, bro. But we we get what you mean. Thank you. So the numbers don't lie, right? Man threw 36 touchdowns, 43 uh, all together, right? Mm-hmm. Six picks. It with a touchdown ratio of what, like, was it 3.5? I'm going to add something right here just because I'm looking at stats. Passing attempts, Lamar Jackson is 26th in the league. Mm. 401 passing attempts. What's the highest in the league? 626 from Jared Goff and James Winston. Boop, boop. Brady threw 613 times at four. So, and then (laughs) Minshew threw more at 470 at 20. Which adds to the point the Ravens don't throw the ball. They're a running team. Yeah. So, I mean... But anyway, continue. That just surprised me, honestly. I just wanted to throw that in there while you were kind of talking. Uh, What's the differential between, like, him and, like, the 15th spot? 15 would be Ryan Fitzpatrick at 502. 502. So about 80 80 different attempts. Uh, It's about the split. 502. Between him and, like, 101. 101? Yeah, 101 attempts. Okay, my bad. I thought you said, like, 520-something. No, five. No, no, I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, 502. Yeah, Lamar Jackson had 401 attempts. 400. He threw one. the ball 401. Okay, times. my bad. I misheard it. I thought it was like 420. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> had 265 completions for a total 66.1% completion percentage. 
Decent. Decent. But essentially what uh what it all boils down to is who has done what he's done this season? Nobody. Major leap forward, electrifying, so on and so forth. You can you can you can sit there and you know have a little seizure over there if you want. He was electrifying. Say like he say was me. definitely electrifying. Say what you will, and like I uh, and I get it. You know you want to hang that Chiefs performance over him. That was literally what the third fourth game of the year. I'm not hanging. I'm not being a homer and hanging a Chiefs game on him. I'm hanging the fact that at one point in several games he's thrown for only like 104 yards and he went 14 of like 35 in one game. So if you're going to sit there and tell me that that's an MVP caliber player, you're absurd. Who the fuck you're is absurd. better than him? Who? I will, I will give Who is better than him? There's like five quarterbacks that are better than him. With the rushing. Five. Five, five. quarterbacks that are better than five. You know what? Okay. I got five. <laughs> who, who are the five that is better than him? Literally. Don't you dare. Like, he's going to fucking do it. <laughs> Mahomes dick has not moved out of Eric's mouth since 2017. Who is better quarterback than Patrick Mahomes? Okay, that's fine. But no, like, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not. I was asking you a question. Okay. Who? No, no, because like this but is always you don't know where. Clutch. Hold on, you don't know so where I was gonna I go. Gonna you gonna say, you, you don't. You Russell didn't Wilson. know where I was gonna go with it. So let me go with it, and then you can jump. Because I know you was gonna say Russell Wilson. No, I wasn't. Let me go I ahead. Said, okay. Let Let me go ahead. Who is a better quarterback? Okay, Aaron Rodgers is a better quarterback than Lamar Jackson. Fair enough. Who's on a serious down slope. It doesn't matter. He They've is literally a, been he, hiding him behind a run game in my line. He's a better exactly. quarterback than Lamar Jackson. Right now, he's a better quarterback. He is a all better time, quarterback. Yes. All time, yes. But right now, are you telling me Aaron Rodgers is playing okay. better than Lamar I, Jackson? I think what EDJ is kind of saying is the same thing I was saying. It, he's going off of passing right now, right? The yes. better passer. Say that yes. then. There's a lot of quarterbacks better passer than Lamar Jackson, though. That's Yeah. At the quarterback position, you have to consider the fact that he's put his team in the position they're in by also running the football. Though. Mm-hmm. Sure, and that's and, not in the argument. And his MVP season is you said that's based... not in the argument. No, his run. I haven't argued about his running at all. But that's his... that's that's a huge element you're leaving out. That's an element that doesn't need to be spoken of because everyone knows of his running ability. But it does. Why does With that need that, to be that, He put that's, 1,200 yards on the board. That's a total pass. It's like a total pass oh, okay. thing, bro. Oh, fucking K. We praise quarter like running backs mm-hmm. when they manage to reach 1,000. A quarterback managed to do that. A quarterback, mm-hmm. right? Now, if you want to say, oh, Aaron Rodgers is a better passer. Fuck, even if you wanted to say Jameis Winston is a better passer. That's I just, might let that that's, I might let you That's that. disrespectful to Lamar Jackson, I'll give you that. That's just what I'm saying. So, like, just saying, like, hiding behind <laughs> That's pretty the quarterback. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, like, behind the quarterback position, just say passer. And I'll be like, oh, okay, cool. You're right. Okay, fine. We'll go passer. Passer. Yeah. It, it, okay. Passer. Mm-hmm. Because, like, we all know that the quarterback position is more than just passing. Right. It's literally being the general of the offense. Correct? These are the facts. These are the facts. These are things that we look into for quarterbacks, right? Mm-hmm. He has orchestrated that offense through Greg Roman, whatever. He has orchestrated that offense very well. Mm-hmm. Is this or is this not a fact? That's a fact. I, I think like the main thing when you're coming from the other side of it is, and also looking up this stat of, the fact that Lamar Jackson is number 23 in rushing attempts. So he is higher on the rushing list than he is on the passing list. And there are guys that played half the season that have more passing attempts mm-hmm. than Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. So I think basically as a – we say quarterback because that's the position. And at the end of the day, the quarterback's job is to pass the football. If you can run, that's a plus. Right? I mean, do, do we well, not I agree with that? Need, I think we need to speak more to Lamar um, transcending the position but at the and same, redefining the position, I think. But, see, this is the argument we had, and I think that's bullshit. Why? Be- because he's not going to do that because that's not what the quarterback position is, and it never will be. Didn't Michael Vick already do exactly. that? Exactly. And, see, that. but, okay, th- this is my point. Of but the, the thing, everybody, we always bring up Michael Vick, but Michael Vick never had an offense catered to him. And that's the difference. 
That's why it's so powerful with Lamar Jason because he actually has a coach saying, hey, I see your strength. We're going to cater to that strength and build the whole team around your strength. But how long does that actually work? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, with is him, that... he doesn't take hits, so it could last for several years. That's true, but at the same time, like, and this is what me and Ray were kind of uh, debating about, is because just the whole logistics of it, I mean, one, how long can that actually work? Two, is that actually going to win you a Super Bowl? Because Probably at... not right now, but he's in his second year, bro. And I... that's, that's, that's right. the main thing. But like... I'm looking forward to, like, the next five years, okay? Is that going to win you a Super Bowl? Because at the end of the day, for me personally, I see that as a one-trick pony. And I'm not saying that he's not mm-hmm. going to progress. He's not going to get better. I, I'm not saying any of that because I have no doubt in the world but that's what that I Lamar think. Jackson can be one of the best quarterbacks yeah. in the league because he's got so much potential. But at the same time, if you fall on that crutch and you keep on, he's going to be 30 with no ring. And then what do you, what do you have out of that? Now you have a... A slower, more sluggish Lamar Jackson that never learned how to pass the football. Well, I'm looking at how he progressed from last season to Mm -hmm. this season. And and you're asking me about five years in the future. And I think if he continues that path of progression, I mean, I think he'll be – that that leads to an elite uh, uh, passer. But the only thing is – okay, kind of what we said earlier, are we – are we pegging him down because he has an offense that's catered to mm-hmm. him? No and yes at the same time because I think that will hurt his progression in the long run. If he doesn't have to worry about passing, why is he going to take a huge step up in passing? Because from last year to this year, passing-wise, not the biggest progression. I'm not saying that he didn't progress, but it's not like there's an immense level of progression there. From last year to this year, passing the football. I mean, what are we saying? What are we base? What are we basing that off of? Because yeah, I mean, if we go off of last year's stats, he was what only had like a hundred uh, attempts total, and I think what maybe a thousand yards passing. Okay, twelve hundred. So, and you, only four hundred attempts and three thousand yards this year. I mean, that's for average passing? to little to underneath average quarterback. But if you look at Michael Vick's early, early, earlier seasons, that's on pretty much on path with that. Fair, but and he also and has like the twice that, the rushing attempts this year than Vick did in his year. That is also that he, a fact. With the Vick comparison, I think that that goes right on par with kind of what I'm saying. Because I mean, did Vick win a ring? And then by the end of Vick's Vick career, Vick also said he wasn't looking at his playbook when he was in Atlanta, either. <laughs> <laughs> which is fair. <laughs> but. By the end of Vic's career, what was Vic? He had he was progressed. Punch drunk. Hey, he I was mean, punch right, drunk. but at the same time, he he didn't run the ball like he did in his younger hey, years. Can somebody tell me what Pat Mahomes' middle name is, real quick? No, his uh, middle name is Levi. Is it really? That's he hilarious. got the blackest middle name. Sorry, I'm sorry. That was just a random fact I see because I was just like, Man, look. I just wanted to look at his like past attempts in his uh, MVP season, right? Just to see if they're indicative of like you know just this being a passing league, so on and so forth. And then I seen Patrick Lebron Mahomes the second. That's not like somebody I grew up with. But even like what we was looking at on rushing attempts, Lamar Jackson is here, and the rest of the league is here. here. So him. And, and this is the argument with Ray that, that we had yesterday was the fact that the quarterback trend, the, the quarterback position has already been transcended between oh. Warren Moon, um, Michael Vick. This, this is what it is. Just because you have Lamar Jackson, that this is an extreme case, a generational talent running the football, playing quarterback. It's transcended if it wins a title. If this style wins a title... But at the same time, it's not going to trans- transcend the position because how many people out there can are going to be able to do the same thing he does? There's not a lot. Like it I will said, in the sense a, that It will in the sense that... And, and Stephen A. made this point. It will in the sense that because of the success that Lamar Jackson is having, Jalen Hurts will now get a better look. Okay, I mean, that's fair. And, and that's situations fair. like that will, will start to take place more often. But at the same time, I think that that's just setting you up for failure because 
is Jalen Hurts the same? And and I'm kind of speaking out of context because mm-hmm. I haven't watched Jalen Hurts play that much. But is Jalen Hurts the same caliber of runner as Lamar Jackson? How many quarterbacks are really the same caliber I feel as you, Lamar Jackson? I feel what you're saying, and I I agree with you, but I think that's irrelevant also because if he it just depends. I mean, I'm I'm saying he's gonna get those looks. I'm not saying he's gonna be as good as Lamar Jackson. Okay, that's fair. But the fact that he's getting that look, I mean, that's. But it maybe not transcend, but it's probably right. it, it's trend setting. Okay, okay, I okay. I mean, still splitting hairs, but I I agree with that more than transcending. But so with that, I think that like what I was what I was saying is with a quarterback that has legs like that, you want him to be able to, like I said at the beginning, extend the play, mm-hmm. figure out where his blockers are where the defense is and moving to a position where now he betters his tackle or his guard or, you know, whoever to give him just an extra second to get somebody open. That's what you're looking for. Even even in a scrambling quarterback, that's what you want him to end up being. And I think Lamar Jackson, that I mean, that fits him perfect. I mean, he could probably, once he develops that skill, he could probably keep a play alive for – a whole fucking minute, mm-hmm. you know, it, with the right offensive line. So, and just like, Ray's going to get irritated, but just like with Pat Mahomes, he extends the play. You know, he is he is looking to scramble around for 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage to find an opening to throw the ball 50 yards down the field. That's, what, that's not what Lamar Jackson is. Right. Lamar Jackson, as soon as he gets pressure, he's a running back. He's no longer a quarterback. I feel you, but if Patrick Mahomes had those wheels, he would be doing the same thing. He could do the same thing. Not to the level Lamar Jackson is, because I already know I'm going to get some weird looks for that. And, and I'm not trying to ride Mahomes' dick here, because uh, I already know that's what Ray's thinking. But Lamar, uh, but but he could. There's plenty of quarterbacks that could do the same thing. Not, not to the level. But that's the point, bro. That's what we're saying. They can't do it to the level because, of Lamar Jackson. Right, That's what's I making totally him so agree. Great. I, and I agree with that. But at the same time, my only take on this is in the long run, that does not work. It is not going to work. I feel and you. And history has proven well, that. Well, all we know is what he's doing right now. We don't know what the long run is. We just know what he we just That's we fair. don't know. Yeah. And this year he is an MVP all pro, first first team all pro quarterback. And I, I agree. That's that's a fact. I mean, that's just it, it, it is what it is. You he can had, it by yourself. He, he he had the same season that Pat Mahomes had a year ago, just a little bit different credentials. You know what I mean? Running the football. He had on that. Bro, this is the wild part, right? I'm looking up from 2018. Don't you know Ben Roethlisberger had 675 attempts? Right, what a sixty-seven percentage uh, completion percentage. That's that's great. That's ridiculous to throw the ball that many times. That is, but I also feel that's the league we're in, and that's why I don't feel like this is a a moment where the quarterback position is changing because it is what it is. It's different people or different different quarterbacks are are good at different things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's forever going to hold up. But at the same time. The whole league's not going to move to, oh, we got to find a running quarterback and run the fucking football all the time. We already had that in the fucking 30s. You know what I'm saying? The wishbone, flexbone offenses. That's that's essential. Get down the fucking street. Maybe you could transcend it in the position, or not maybe the position, but teams and coaches in the sense of, hey, I have this type of run, uh, quarterback. I'm going to build this team a certain way instead of saying I'm going to make this quarterback. Yeah. Uh, I know, do strictly a pocket. Right. I do agree with you to the simple fact of maybe now that coaches will open their eyes and be like, instead of being like, this is a quarterback. This is what you need to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's work with your strengths and let's work around them and hide our. Because as much as we're looking at Lamar Jackson, we have to look at Harbaugh also. Yeah. And look at how he shaped everything too. A fucking genius. Right. Because and, and even and he in deserves Baltimore, a lot of credit for that. He does because even in Baltimore, I mean, people didn't necessarily want that. You know what I mean? Right. Like it, inside uh, the Ravens organization, the only reason Lamar Jackson ended up there is because the owner went out on a limb and said, "All right," and Harbaugh was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna run with it." Mm-hmm. 
plus Ozzy Newsome. See, see what I did there? You run with it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. I do escalate my feelings of disdain towards Lamar Jackson a little bit because it's funny. <laughs> I will say this. He has had a much better year than he did last year. Um, MVP wise, I, I don't know. I, th- I think they just gave it to him, but that's fine. He can have it. Um, cause I think people who could have easily competed with him for the MVP were either hurt or just didn't, their teams didn't match up like they, they usually do. Um, I just, if you trust him in the playoffs, it's crazy. Cause at some point, I mean the goddamn chargers for Christ's sakes, shut him down in the playoffs last year. So if you think somebody hasn't had a full, now a full season of film to watch the Ravens run the ball a bunch of times, you're crazy. Somebody's going to figure that out. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you about the playoffs because I think whoever they play is, even in the divisional round, is going to be a very tough um, matchup. Because, I mean, look at all, all the matchups you could have. Um, and granted, we're recording this before any of the playoff games have happened, right. so we, we don't know what's going to pan out. But from top to bottom, I mean, the Texans, well, there's, I think that is almost the easiest matchup. Right. Their three, really. op- their three options are what? The Texans, the Titans, Bills, and the Bills. Or, yeah. yeah. And I think the Bills pose a huge threat to them because just for the simple Defensively, fact. Defensively, not offensively. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But, I mean, look at the regular season game and how close that was right. when they played. I honestly thought the Bills were going to win that game for a minute. And any time that he has played somebody that a playoff caliber team like the 49ers game, I thought the 49ers were going to win that game and pull that off because, I mean, he couldn't do too much with their defense. But their elite defenses, I mean, we have to put that in. Their elite right, defense. but that, exactly. that's the point, though. And, yeah, that's the point because from here on out, in what the, play, supposed in the to be playoffs. Game. Like, it's yeah, right. supposed to be yeah, game. yeah, no, I totally agree with you. So what is he going to do? We have that, to see because that, that gives that's that right. I'm just posing the question. What is he gonna do because the, that will make them win that game? The point is is that now you have a close game where <laughs> Lamar had a little bit of trouble and now you've got a whole game of film on him where you literally were out there playing that game and know maybe kinda how to game plan and shut down a certain aspect and now you've got to go out there and do it again. You know, and sure I think enough. I think that That's fair. is a lot. It hurts the Ravens more than you know the Ravens saying, "Okay, we saw this defense. Let's figure out how to." But and in the playoffs, we know defense wins championships. This is a big fact, right? The Ravens have a great defense too. Though. I was about to say, yeah, like, yeah. About say yeah, like let's that. flip this yeah. on its head yeah, too yeah, yeah. because we've seen when people figure out what Josh Allen does. Even though I was one of the main people shitting on Josh Allen, mm-hmm. I will I'll stand at the front. I'm more than likely wrong about him. He's going to develop well as long as, you know, McDermott keeps him in line and gets him more weapons, uh, offensively speaking. And, you know, Devin Singletary develops as a better running back. They get a better offensive line, so on and so forth. He's going to be a top five, top ten quarterback. No doubt about it. Right? You got the old guard phasing out. He's going to step up. He's going to be there, right? That's what makes me think that this game it's not going to work too well for the Bills if they play the Ravens, right? Their run game is pretty weak. Like, you know, just for actual, like, running backs because you got an aged Frank Gore and an inexperienced Devin Singletary, right? Me and you were talking about this. Mm -hmm. And that's going to grind that offense to a halt. And if we're just going off of kickers, I'm taking Baltimore all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? It it may be a stinker. I'm not going to lie. It would... Stop watching porn, man. (laughs) (laughs) We already went down there, man. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I'm full of them today. Hey, we were spitting today. Yeah. He was turning that documentary on and he went watching earlier. All right, bro. All right. Oh shit. Oh shit. Back to the playoffs. 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 But I will. I will agree with you. I. I don't think. Because, yeah, I don't think they pose that big of a threat. Yeah. I think Off- they're offensively. Gonna I think uh, this is the whole thing because then you're putting all that pressure on the defense. The worst part is the lower the seed goes, the higher probability of the of the team winning, I think. Because 
The Texans, damn near, I don't think they have a shot to beat the Fuck. Ravens. The Bills, eh. The Titans, it's like, I mean, the Titans. The Titans like, worry me the most out of it. Like, really? Yeah, because they're just unpredictable. I unpredictable. Really, I don't and know what they're going to do. Literally, I said that at the, uh, at the beginning of the season because I was actually looking at our, I wish I would have brought that damn notebook because I was looking at our uh, preseason predictions and Ray had the Titans in. Just for that simple fact. The Oracle has spoken. All right. Shut that shit up. I'm telling. Okay. <laughs> All right, bro. I'm going to put on my chief sweater. I'm going to have to go home and put on my chief hey, sweater. Hey, just because it wasn't. Watching the fucking okay. <laughs> First of all, last time you wore your I'm chief good, sweater, bro. the Chiefs won. That was at work, though. And I didn't put the intentions on that sweater. No, I'm pretty sure no, it was I'm here good, and bro. you said it. Hey, just because it wasn't recorded, motherfucker, doesn't mean you haven't been wrong. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Just undefeated. because the last time Never we lost. Was, yeah, just because the last time we was picking, okay, skip. that was recorded. <laughs> skip, uh, skip. I, I think anybody poses a challenge to anybody in these playoffs. I mean, uh, yeah, this is this is going to be fun to watch. Um, NFC is going to be good to watch. Um, Kirk Cousins is going to absolutely choke tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, 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 you jumped off, so I'm not going to yeah, jump on you for like, that, I, but. <laughs> Hey, is is this the first uh, playoff game that they've had uh, since the uh, the Stephen Diggs? Yes. Since uh, what was it? The Minnesota against Miracle? each other? Yeah, the Minnesota Miracle. Well, I mean, I guess technically no, because they did the game after. But well, no, against the Vikings versus the Saints, and oh. they're back in New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I think if it's a close game, uh, New Orleans is going to be rattled a little bit. Oh, speaking of oh, which. I don't see it being close. I feel you. Speaking of which, everybody get your, your money not funny for next year because we're all going to New Orleans when the Chiefs play the Saints. Oh, why? yeah, I saw that. Huh? Why? Because why not? Fuck you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you're party people, just saying, like, party why? Like, I know. <laughs> What's so special about that? Because, that one, it's New Orleans, and two, the Superdome, and three, the Chiefs. All right, That's bro. all you need to know. We'll see what she's going to be saying. All right, bro. Man, fair enough. <laughs> I'm going to let you live. Fair enough. I'm going to let you live because we're on the podcast. Oh, damn, Look, I already started asking. I, I literally posed right, this question. Bro. I was like, I'm going to let you live, though. We're on the podcast, so I'm going to let you live, bro. It's all right. It's all right. Throw me under the bus. It's cool. No, I'm good, bro. Nah, bro. It's, it's, it's Just trying good. to get my permission straight. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Since you put it on a public platform. <laughs> fair enough. He is. Hey. <laughs> Manifestation. <laughs> Speak that shit to existence, bro. Don't Facts. <laughs> Facts. But man, the food. Like I just, I just want to go back for the food, damn near. I'm, and then I'm a, with ga- you, a bro. game on top hey. of that. Shit. In the Superdome. I'm with you, dog. These are facts. Cause that that is one stadium I definitely have always wanted to to go. And I'm inviting Destiny Yarbrough to the game with us. Okay. What? I'm lost. No. Just Don't look, do it, bro. Yeah, no. Nah, just look up this chick named Destiny Yarbrough versus Gabby Garcia, right? You you know who Gabby Garcia is. I, I know who Gabby Garcia is. Yeah, that's a woman equal in size to her. Nah, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like her. Okay. It doesn't look like Gabby Garcia. Don't Dog. do that. Don't do that to her. Dog, she got D-tackle shoulders. No, she does not. You know what I watched last night? Uh, the, the, <laughs> the Decade in Review. And uh, I forgot um, how bad Amanda Nunes knocked Cyborg the fuck out. Oh, yeah, she inch I mean, that was like a video game knockout. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. She inch She exploded backwards after she hit her in the face. And, yeah, she inch mm-hmm. That's That's when you know KO is bad. Bad. If a person can't, like, at least just fall flat on their stomach. What did uh, Nunes just fight in? Uh, two. Durant, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 245. Oh. 246 is next. next. Yeah, 245, yeah. That was the Connor big card, versus right? Cowboy. You said what? That was the big card. That Usman yeah, and Covington. Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, that was the end of the year card. That was so hard. Yes, it that was. Card, that card was so hard, though. Yeah, it was. But bro. January 18th? You, is nobody else pumped for this? Not for real. I'm pumped for it. What? Cowboy Connor? Oh. Yeah, no. I'm kind of cool on Connor now, man. He got. I know, the but Cowboy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but Cowboy. I hate to say it, bro. Not like Cowboys let me down too many times. It's man. just a perfect like. There is no better matchup than this right now for both of them. Very winnable on both sides. Yeah, yeah. that's why it's so exciting and to me because I honestly have no idea what's gonna happen. Yeah, I feel you. He on could that. come out and sleep him in ten seconds, or 
Cowboy could whoop his ass for five rounds. Yeah, didn't I don't already, know. Didn't they already? Weren't they already supposed to? They fight? were supposed to fight. It and fell then, uh, through one because dude stepped in? who stepped in? Did somebody step in? I don't think so. I think it just fell through because Connor wasn't. Yeah, he just never actually signed the bout agreement. Be- yeah, because he wasn't um, gonna fight if it wasn't a main event. Really? And they weren't trying to give him a main event. It was gonna be a co-main. Yeah. I thought there was one where Cowboy. He was supposed to fight Cowboy, but then... uh, nah. Was it the Ferguson dude, fight, and then Ferguson dude, stepped in to fight Some dude stepped Cowboy? in, and he was actually... Uh, uh, McGregor was getting beat, but then he fucked that other dude up. Nah. It was a few no, ago. I know exactly what you're talking about. He's talking about the Chad Mendes fight. He was... Because Connor was supposed to fight Aldo. Aldo pulled out, yeah, and he fought okay, Mendes. Okay, that's what it is. Yep. That's what it is. That was uh, right. when Connor won the interim belt. Yep. Yep, you're right. Is right. that... Or actually, hold on. No, I think he's thinking of too when uh, who was Con- he was supposed to fight Rafael dos Anjos and then Nate Diaz stepped in. Oh yeah. yeah. No, it was it was it, uh, oh, it was okay. some white it was some white boy he fought. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the Chad Mendes fight. Yeah, I mean Chad Mendes technically ain't white, but oh really? I didn't know that. Mendes. Yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. I mean, well, okay. Yeah, I feel yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Dude look like yeah, Captain America. Right. Um, is there like you look like what? Captain America. <laughs> Hey, is there any, like, I was just kind of thinking about last night about just Connor and the insane rise he had and the fact of, like, between the Eddie Alvarez fight and the Jose Aldo fight, like, looking back on it, it's almost like that, there's no way that was real. Give me your belt. There's no way that was real. (laughs) Give me your belt. After Aldo did all this, 13 seconds, Seconds. done. Done. Everything Nobody over. Nobody looked at Aldo the same after No. That. Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez, same thing. We've seen him get fucked up in the first round many times. And come back. And that, that never happened. He didn't touch Connor. Literally. Because yeah, I watched that uh, from start to finish last night. Literally. Like, he landed, what, five strikes. Not significant. Bro. Five strikes. There's no way that shit was real. Give me your belt. <laughs> for real though, like, right. literally, <laughs> like Connor was out here deboning people for belts, bro. What belt? No, this belt's mine. <laughs> that Floyd one was hilarious. Too. Those, those two. Where, what the fuck happened? Where did that? Where did that even come from? Like that shit was just some YouTube suggestions and gold. Flash <laughs> kids. Speaking of MMA, something we have to talk about. What that is? Did anyone watch Fedor versus Rampage? Yes. No. No. And you two don't. Please. I seen the result, bro. The worst bro. display of MMA I ever seen in my life. Two people who should retire fought. Well, they're both like seventy years old. Combined, yeah. <laughs> bro, like I almost cried. Rampage looked like how I look right <laughs> now out there. Fat, like, bro, Gus no. was hanging over. He's sitting there breathing hard. Ain't even through five strikes breathing hard. Speaking of not believing in shit, like, I didn't, like, I was, like, watching this shit just like, this is not real. This is not real. Figment of this my is CGI. Yep. There's no way that this fat fuck is Rampage. <laughs> There's no way. Like, yeah, this, like, he, he's never been the most. His belly moved more than him in the fight. <laughs> Because, like, we know <laughs> Rampage has never been the most fit, light heavyweight. But, like, this man said, oh, we fighting a heavyweight and overdid it. Um, 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Kansas City, they did him dirty. <laughs> because it said, it said December 24th and they or December 22nd and they showed, like, UFC Rampage, like, champion Rampage, abs and everything. And then uh, January 2nd. And then they show Rampage from the Fedor fight. Damn. No, he like, almost oh, had no. man titties. He almost had man titties. Damn. Like, it was bad. When you're a fighter, even if you're a heavyweight and you walking around with man titties, like, not even like the real buff man titties. But think about the how only, much time, you, only time that shit's acceptable is when you retired. Think about how much Eat it was everything hard. you want. You deserve it. You cut weight for that mm-hmm. long. You deserve to be a fat fuck. Fact. Think about how much of a star dude was. Like, he was in the A team and everything. Yeah. And even, That's like... That's what fucked up his career. I knew who Rampage was. Yeah, it did. I knew who Rampage was before I got an MMA. I knew Chuck Liddell and I knew Rampage. That was it. And, and I knew and Rampage knocked out Chuck Liddell. That's all I knew. There was four people. Chuck Liddell, Rampage, Lyoto Machida, 
and Houston Alexander. You want to know why I know who Houston Alexander was? <laughs> why? He was on, uh, what was it, Lugs. He was on a Lugs ad. Yeah. And I thought he was the coldest motherfucker because he's big as shit. He looked like a bad motherfucker. And then I watched, Lugs. who was it, James... Uh, Irvin. James Irvin. Fuck him up. <laughs> hey, just watch the Keith Jardine fight and you'll, uh... Because he fucked Keith Jardine up. Did he? That Houston was, Alexander? That was, that was like his coming out party. That was on the yeah. win he had, I, No, I think he won some other fights. Did he? Yeah. I thought he went one and three in the I just know he lost to Kimbo. And... Yeah, like, and that's what killed his fucking career. Mm-hmm. Cause if I think can... that was his last fight with the UFC. Because, you know what's the only fight i ever seen that was worse than that uh, Rampage Fedor fight? Was literally Kimbo versus Dada 5000. Yeah. Okay. One last question about that. You think he'd take a dive? Rampage. Mm-hmm. Low key. The only reason I do kind of think is real is because at first, when he first went down, I was like, he didn't even touch him. And then they showed the replay. Well, when he got up, he was bleeding from exactly where... Where he got punched. Yes. So, and then after the replay, it's like, yeah, he didn't really hit him that hard, but then again... That tired. It's Fedor. Yeah. And Fedor has some weird touch you power and you go to sleep. That man got juju on him. He really does. But... It didn't li- you know what, though? I've realized this, too. In certain parts of America, that shit don't work for him. Oh, uh... Fedor? Yeah. yeah. His juju wears off. <laughs> yeah. That's a fact. You gotta keep him in foreign places. Actually, you know, because they fought in Japan. Yes, they did. So, in America, his juju doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But in Japan Anywhere and Russia... Else. Yeah. It works. So... Conspiracy. With... I feel you. With that being said, the power of Putin... <laughs> <laughs> Computers, Putin. <laughs> With that being said, who you got in their primes, Brock or Fedor? I put that on our uh, Instagram story as a prime. Player. I'm taking Brock. For real? I'm taking Brock. Brock Lesnar's a monster. This. All right, bro. Because like, his prime? I have. I have, and like, this is the whole thing. I've seen the people he destroyed, right? Okay, fair. And I've seen, because like, this is when Fedor could take punishment, but like. It would take, like, two rounds for Brock to, like, gas out. You know what I'm saying? And I think Fedor could survive that. That type of storm? After all the wars he had been through? I know we're talking about Prime Fedor, but, like, we're talking about, like, you know, all the punishment he dealt with. The Fedor that fought Nogueira is whooping Brock's ass. No, he's not. Nogueira ain't got that type of power, dog. Not that type of strength. I mean, I feel you, now, but at the same time, I mean, what's what's Brock going to do? He's going to do it on the ground, and I don't think that he's going to be able to finish Fedor on the ground. You know what's crazy? I would see that shit going, I mean, he'll win rounds, you know what I'm I saying? I see that fight going a lot like the Heath Herring fight, mm-hmm. personally. That's how I see it. He's going to land a big shot early in the fight, have Fedor fucked up for a while, and keep pouring it on where he can't recover. I just see Fedor landing one random shot that just... Fucks Brock up. Yes, yeah, watch and it ends be, up finishing it from there. Watch, it'd probably be a fucking liver kick. That, with our luck, we'd be like, yeah, Fedor can't pull it. Oh. <laughs> yup. <laughs> Fedor. You right. Probably be third round... Four four minutes and thirty seconds into the fucking round. I guess at the end of the day, it it, it all goes off of where the fights at. <laughs> one fight, and we've been on this for a while, and we'll probably have to wrap it up here in a second. But yep. one fight that I wish Lesnar never took was the over mean fight. I feel you, because Lesnar was not healthy. A, yeah. It, but what Brock Lesnar is not going to back down from a fight? Are you kidding me? And B, it kind of killed his career. I mean, it. Yeah. It. it just well, get the healthy. Of Brock was all the way gone. Yeah, that was like that was basically the same thing as Amanda Nunes versus Ronda Rousey. Mm-hmm. When you really think about it, because he got that initial loss, and it's like, okay, let's see how he, you know, responds. To mm-hmm, it. Comes back from that, and then we got like a whole fucking year of him being gone. Maybe, maybe longer. I think so. that was UFC one twenty one. He lost to Kane. And UFC 142, I want to say. Yeah. One, yeah. one of those. It was a 140, 140. Yeah, it was 142 because I remember 144 was in February. And that was in December. So, what, bro? This was 2011? I think. Wow. Right around there, yeah. Holy fuck. I think that was one of my first events, too. Yeah. That was, like, one of my first five events. 
I think the first event you came out to watch was 134. Didn't you, didn't you come to watch that? That first card in Brazil where Shogun bounced uh, Forrest Griffin's head off the fucking canvas and what, uh, Silva beat Okami? I think so. Yeah. No, 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 no. I wasn't there for that. Nope. Take that back. I was not there for that. I think you were supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. And something happened. 135. Rampage. uh, Jones. Jones, yeah. But, yeah. That definitely... That was the icing on the cake of this is this is it for Brock, and what he just had that one off yeah. against Mark Hunt and what we knew him that. as, yeah. Because to be real honest, he would have got fucked up by DC. You think so? Hell yeah. Still, <laughs> EDJ is ready. To go. <laughs> as soon as you kept talking, EDJ was like, Rapskis, <laughs> Rapskis, Rapskis, Ski Raps. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode 32 of the Strobank Show. We appreciate you for listening. Um, you know where we at. Gentlemen, we potted today. <laughs> we fucking potted. We potted. I potted hard. We potted, bro. <laughs> Hour and 40 minutes of potting. We, we potted, bro. Potted. Pod. God damn. Podskis. 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 Yes! <laughs> yes! Rap skis for the Podskis. <laughs> I love it. We'll be back next week, ladies and gentlemen. Strobanks out! <laughs>